I'm going to break the mold a little bit with this video. Um, I'm, I'm going to be giving some physics help for this one. I had a request by a student for a, a physics problem that was giving them trouble. Uh, so I wanted to go ahead and um, try and explain this here a little better to help them out. So um, to start things off, it says we have a hockey player that is standing on his skates on a frozen pond. When an opposing player moving with a uniform speed of 12 meters per second skates by with the puck. After three seconds, the first player makes up his mind to chase his opponent. If he accelerates uniformly at four meters per second squared, assuming the player with the puck remains in motion at constant speed, how long does it take him to catch his opponent? So this will be the hard part. Part B is just going to be a little extension of our answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to figure this out. So one thing you'll want to remember from physics is that if you're trying to solve for your distance here when you're dealing with acceleration, you're going to use this formula x is equal to one half at squared plus your initial velocity. I'm not sure how your teacher might teach that, but I was taught v naught or v sub zero is your initial velocity times your time and then plus your starting or initial uh, distance or height or something that you're working with for that one. Okay. Sorry if you hear my cat meowing in the background. He just jumped up on the desk while I was trying to make this video. Um, so that would be one equation that's going to help us. Another one would be just the basic uh, D equals RT or distance equals rate times time. Your teacher may have also given you, you know, X equals V times T. That's the same thing. You know, it is really just goes back to distance equals rate times time. So these two things are going to help us, right? The first one is going to help us with people that are accelerating accelerating uh, and, and they're really all connected so I mean this this equation here we can really think of this for all of them but, and this will deal with our constant motion is really just a simplified version uh, uh, or a more complicated version of d equals rt okay so the first thing we want to start with is we're trying to find out how long it takes us to catch our opponent okay for this person who, who kind of waits so I'm going to start with the person who's trying to catch their opponent first. A few things to note here. We know that their acceleration is 4, 4.0 meters per second squared. We know that their initial velocity, or v sub 0, is equal to nothing. They started out stopping, so their v sub 0 is going to be 0. So when we plug this in, this should all just cancel. And they didn't really start with any, you know, uh, starting distance here. So we can basically cancel these two parts of the problem out. So all we're going to have here is that the distance, and I'll change this x here to just d for distance, capital D. Our distance is going to equal one half, our acceleration is four, t squared. And I'm not even going to put the plus other stuff because those are just going to be zeros here. They're just going to cancel out. So let me erase that. Plus zero times t plus zero. That takes care of our accelerating person. We can make this look a little nicer by making this 2t squared. Okay? This is our accelerating person, the chaser. We will call them the chaser for this one. So this is the chaser. Okay? Now the person who's being chased, or the runner, maybe we'll refer to them as, or the skater, uh, this person is traveling at a constant speed. So I'm actually going to, again, you, you could think of this using D equals RT, but to try and keep everything connected, I'm still going to use this formula here. If this person is moving at a constant speed, we know that their acceleration is going to be zero. Okay, they're not, they're not going anywhere. All right, they're not accelerating anywhere. They're just going at a constant speed. Their initial velocity, they told us, was 12 meters per second. So that's going to be in there. Okay, and we're not really worried about, again, a starting distance or something that, you know, is giving this person a, a, any sort of head start. The only tricky thing here is that our time for this one is going to be a little bit different. So the time on this one is going to be, and let me not just put T, but our time is going to be equal to, since we're solving for this person, I kept them as T. So when I get T equals something, it's going to be my answer. But our time for this one is going to be whatever the time of the chaser is plus they get an extra three second head start so whatever the time of this person is going to be is going to be the time of the chaser plus an additional three seconds head start okay so the time will be a little bit different you could another way to do this is you could write this time as t so you could have the chasers um, 
or excuse me, the skater's time is t, and then plug in t minus three for this formula. It's just a little trickier. You got to square t minus three, and then you have to foil all that out. You can do it that way. Uh, and and when you get your answer too, you still would have to subtract three seconds because this is the time you're solving for. So to make it easier, I'm making this one chaser's time t, and I'm making the time of the runner or this the person that's running away or skating away t plus three. Okay, and then we'll get our other formula here that for our skater, we'll call them, they're both skaters, but this one's running away. So the skater and the chaser. The skater, their equation should look like, again, if I plug in a zero for A, that all this stuff right here in the formula is just going to cancel. The only part that I need is right here, this V sub zero T. So we're going to make this 12 D is equal to 12 T. Now, again, though, I need to give them a three second head start. So 12 times t plus three in parentheses. Right? And now we're actually pretty much set up to go. So here and here. Now, what we have here is that when the distance, if you can imagine that these two people, and I'm trying to draw, I'm not a very good drawer here, so bear with me. As this person chases the other person, you know, at one point they might be this far apart, at another point they might be this far apart, at one point they might be this far apart. When their distances though are equal, so when the d's are the same, that's going to be, when this person has traveled the same distance as this person, they're going to be at the same spot, and he's caught the other person. So what I want to do is set these two d's, or these two equations, equal to each other. Okay. So I'm going to flip to the next page to do that. We've got 12t plus 3. Oops. Change the pen mode. So 12 times t plus 3. And then I'll flip back here. So that was the skater is equal to 12t squared. Or sorry, 12, I think it was 2. 2t squared. Thank you. Now we just have to solve this like a quadratic equation. So I'm going to want to distribute the 12 here first. That'll give me 12t plus 36 is equal to 2t squared. And now I have to get everything equal to 0 and if I can factor it, that would be nice, but this might be one I have to use the quadratic formula on. So let's subtract the 12t over here, and let's subtract the 36 over here. So I'm trying to get everything equal to 0. So this would give me 0 equals 2t squared minus 12t minus 36. I'm even going to take another step just to make my work a little bit nicer. These are all divisible by 2, so let's just divide 2 on both sides by all these. And that makes a nice, easier equation to work with of t squared minus 6t minus 9. Oh, sorry, minus 18. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure it's not 9. Minus 18. All right, from this point now, we're, we're getting there. What I'm going to have to do now is solve this equation. This equation, unfortunately, if you try to factor it, you know, into like t plus something, t minus something, it's not going to factor nicely. So we're going to have to use the quadratic formula, which is an Algebra 2 topic. Um, so if you're not in Algebra 2 yet, I'll give you a quick crash course here. And here's your quadratic formula. Uh, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. If you're wondering where the B's and the A's and all this stuff come from, uh, and we're looking for, in this case, T, which is going to function like our X. So in this case, we're solving for T. This will be solved using this formula, which is called the quadratic formula. It solves quadratic equations, and those are just equations that have a degree of 2 or have a variable that's squared. Um, so now that we're at this point, again, if you're wondering what your A, your B, and your C are, they're just the coefficients of each of the terms Sending order. So if you put the terms in descending powers of t, which we have here, you put your t squared term first, your t term second, and your number last, the number in front of each of these is going to be what you plug in for a, b, and c. So in this case, first off, a is going to be 1. So whenever I use this formula, I'm plugging in 1 for a. b is negative 6. So whenever I plug in b here, I'm going to plug in negative 6. And then finally, whenever I see a C, I'm going to plug in a negative 18. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to have X equals the opposite of B. In this case, the B is already negative. So the opposite of a negative number is positive 6 plus or minus the square root of 
Now, negative 6, if you square it when you plug it in for a variable, should be a positive 36, negative 6 times negative 6, minus 4, A is 1, and C is negative 18. Okay, so that helps us plug things in there. This is all going to be divided by 2 times 1, because 1 is A. So 2 times 1 would be 2. So I'm just going to start cleaning this up a little bit here. If you start out here, we'll do 6 plus or minus. You really can just punch this whole part right here in your calculator if you want. And if you punch this in, 36 uh, minus 4 times 1 times uh, negative 18, all that stuff, that, that just goes right in your calculator. That inside part should just equal 108. Okay, so you should have the square root of 108 here in your calculator. This is all divided by 2 keep going here. The square root of 108, I'm just going to approximate this. It's not going to be a perfect exact answer because in physics we're just looking for an approximate time that this is going to, uh, this person is going to catch the other person. So the square root of 108 is about 5.2. Oh, no, I'm sorry, 10.4. I'm getting ahead of myself here. I'm one, one step ahead. 10.2. Sorry about that. All divided by 2. Well, 10.4, one more time. So that should be a 10.4. Now when I divide it by two, so what I'm gonna do now is take two into both of these. Six divided by two is three, so we'll have x is equal to three, plus or minus 10.4 divided by two. This is gonna be about 5.2. I'm gonna have three plus or minus 5.2. That means there's two answers. One of the answers is three plus 5.2, the other answer is 3 minus 5.2, okay? And actually, I wrote x here, but technically, again, these are t's. So one answer that we have is that they will catch, uh, the chaser would catch the skater at 8.2 seconds, okay? For this part, if we do this, and we go ahead and subtract, you'll find that this would tell us, get a t, this would make it that the skater would be caught at negative 2.2 seconds. So we have two answers here, but we really shouldn't have two answers to the problem. There should be one that works. And you can tell right here that negative time isn't really going to make sense, okay? So it's not going to make sense, that negative 2.2 answer. The only one that's going to make sense here is that 8.2 seconds, okay? So we've just answered part A, that it takes 8.2 seconds for the chaser to catch the skater, okay? Now let's go ahead and answer the final question. I need to free up a little bit of space here to do that. I'm starting to run out of room. Key with that was that we had to get everything equal to zero and then use the quadratic formula. We had to plug in A, B, and C for each of those different numbers. All right, so now that I have this, from the previous slide, we had these two equations. We had one for the skater and one for the chaser. Okay, we had this D equals 2T squared, so our chaser equation was d equals 2t squared. And we had this equation for the um, skater that d was equal to 12 times t plus 3. Okay, we're trying to find the distance that uh, they traveled. Well, all we have to do is plug in our 8.2 for t. It doesn't even matter which one we plug these into. We should get the same answer in both ones. So if I'm solving for the distance now, we'll just plug it in. We'll get 8.2 squared. And if you take that whole thing in there, if you take the 2 times the 8.2 squared, you should be coming up with about, and, and this is a rounded answer, so I technically probably should have stored answers in my calculator, but for the purpose of this, you'll, you'll get the point. I'll get that D is equal to 134.48 meters. Those are the units we're working in here. So that's the answer to the problem. Just to show you that these will be identical, we could also do 12 times um, 8.2 plus 3, which is going to give us, if we punch this all in the calculator, 134 meters. Again, you might notice that they're a little bit different. Uh, the 0.48 and 0.4 don't match up perfectly. The reason that is is because we rounded our answer when we took the square root. This is not an exact answer here. This would, when I took the square root of 10.4, it's approximate. So you can see that our answers are a little bit different. 
different, but it's not by much, and that's just because of rounding. So part A, here it is. Part B, take your pick. Either one of those should be should be fine.